sir good evening to all good evening good evening good evening sir good evening to all of you i sir. joined air force flying college in 1963 and my basic training i done in jodhpur sir and jet training i done in hakimpet it's a coincident i commanded both the stations and aoc oh that's great in 1971 i was posted as a flying instructor to one of the flying stations in september 71 we are told to stand by to move out with 24 hours notice but names were not given in october we are asked to stand by with 24 hours notice and the names were given who all to move out as rest will carry out with the training one fine morning two dakotas landed one team went off to delhi and other team went to guwahati i reached palam and next day in the evening by an avro we were sent off to jamnagar an old mr A pilot, and I was attached to target towing flight in Jamnagar, where Pete Wilson was the station commander, and the target towing flight commander was the squadron leader Johri. There were four pilots; three were on attachment, self from Mysteries, Nakvi had come from Su Sevens, and Saluja had come from Su Sevens. So we were seven pilots. We were given seven aircraft at Jamnagar, and. one fine day we were asked to take off and go to the one of the airfield in western sector when we reached over the airfield we found a long runway parallel taxi track few glass pens and a very small building where the smoke was coming out it appeared to be mess and there were plenty of plinth and tents were pitched we landed we received there little briefing was done about the station it was very a small station one officer and just about 14 or 15 men to look after the station All aircraft were loaded, connected with the ports and the guns, and we were asked to carry out few low-level navigation sorties to familiarize with the area. It was totally desert. I remember there was a, one village which had an overhead tank, which was the actually point which we could see from distance and could make out where is our base is. Their life carried on. Every day, sunrise, we'll get into the underground bunker that is ACR. and after sunset will come back life was getting bored if i remember the date i think it was 21st november or 22nd november sio had gone for a briefing to palam and late afternoon the call came so i picked up the phone and sio wanted to speak to the flight commander i said sir not possible he's flying he was very agitated but he said something which alarmed me that sio couldn't have gone crazy all of a sudden while talking to me so i said now what and he banged the phone i came out looked for the sto man i think mandloi was his name i said load all the aircraft what has happened in between when we used to fly these pots were very polished plastic covers they were getting insects hit so they were getting damaged so we had offloaded so okay. we used to fly only with guns sir so i asked the sto to load all the aircraft so five aircraft were loaded and when nakwi landed followed by johri they all were loaded and then we were informed that in east to three aircraft were shot down by mouse messy on lejeras yeah boyra battle sir third one was ganpati yes yeah. nothing happened we kept waiting every day on third evening we had reached to the barrack and it was a long barrack we was almost about 18 20 including the technical officer atc officer all used to stay including a scornet jain who became oa aoa later on sir and there was another room Where the mid pilots used to stay, including Vinko Anand, Godfrey Salins, Bandal Tyagi, who became chief later on. Okay. On third evening, from the radio, we came to know that war has broken out. Various airfields were attacked in India, so there was a little commotion, and we were asked to be there before sunrise at the ACR. We reached in the morning, waiting for the instruction. Mrs. Gandhi was in Calcutta, if I remember that day, uh, that night. and later on in the morning we got the orders from the station commander to war is broken on and you are free to carry on now there were two three types of targets we had one was to search and strike one was to attack airfield and third was to support army okay so we were asked to start with the search and strike so six of us took out i used to fly number 2 used to be flying officer das gupta we, we went to the aircraft and then the panic started because the batteries were down to 18 volts as the power had been cut off and the ground batteries were not charged okay being old hand on type we managed to start took off 
headed towards Pakistan, the area given to us was to reach one of the railway station, turn left, follow the road and the railway line and look for the target. Okay. Somewhere halfway, there was a very small station and there was a train park. And as I overflew the train, we saw the people jumping and running. In, they were in khaki uniform. The train had a passenger bogey in the front okay. and in the rear. And the engine was facing towards north. I, I still remember the scene. It was a very, very small station. Okay. And then... Is it a Bawal Nagar station? Other Bawal wagons Nagar? were camouflaged with nets. Okay. So I called up, turned around, fired my one pod. I think 19 rockets used to be there. Followed by Das Gupta who fired his one pod. Headed towards south at low level. And we're reaching the point from where we had to turn and reach our base. There was a hillock. If my memory serves me right, it, that place was Fort Abbas. It was a little hillock. And as we were overflying hillock, I noticed the people were running around. And that's the time I noticed there were tents pitched up with camouflage nets. Couldn't see much of target except those tents. So I turned around and I said, I'm going to fire my last ro rocket uh, pod. And asked Das Gupta that I'm going in a general direction and look for me. I fired my those, I think, 19 rockets. And all of a sudden, there was a little black and reddish ball of fire. It bloody just blew up in a huge one. And we turned, came back to base. And life is very funny. When we came over, coming, reaching the base, we called up so I could hear this leader Jain on the RT, who was the ATC officer. As we were turning on to the, for the landing, that's the time I realized that if we both lower our undercarriage, then there'll be no safety. There'll be no cover. So I called out Das Gupta to go ahead and land. I'll give a cover. Okay. And there was an RT call. I'm look this yard, which I see back here. And that was Bandal Tiagi. After that, I had no RT call. I just <laughs> put my throttle back under okay. carriage down and just quietly landed. Okay. Went to ACR, debrief what we saw it and what happened. And then there's the time to excitement. This was my first sortie of the day. And I was the first one to land. So Bandal came and gave me a mummy enough dressing down. We were there to look after you. What are you talking like a tiger that you will give a cover? <laughs> so that's the funny part of it. After some time, another sortie was given to us. Self and late Das Gupta again. We took off. The target given was near a railway station and if you see any trains or any movement on the train, uh, railway line and road, they were parallel and there was a canal also with it on the left side towards India. That is Mandi, sir. And Chistian there Mandi. on my horror, I found there were maybe four or five trains were parked on that station. It was a fairly huge station. Called out on the RT, went into the attack, fired my rocket, first port, followed by Das Gupta. Then I went in the second type, fired my second port. Das Gupta fired, we came back. Evening again, we had given the third sortie to take off and search. That evening sortie, we couldn't find anything. But when we landed back and switched off, there was a little commotion. Because number two this time was flight from Mathur. He had bullet holes on his left wing. Somehow the repair was done. And evening we went back to the barracks. That was the only place. Yeah, it's a coincidence that my charpai was next to the door. Okay. I had a quick dinner, went off to sleep. I heard a little knock on the door. So I thought I was dreaming. But okay. then there was another knock. So I got up and asked, who's that? So court word was given and that was the station commander. Oh, okay. Now in the night, because it was a long barrack and we were about 18, 20 chefs used to sleep there. We had a small bulb under the charpai line so that in the night, if somebody has to get up and go to the bathroom or something. So there was a little light. So I opened the door and found the station commander standing outside. He asked for the CEO. I said, sir, he's sleeping. I said, wake him up. It was pitch dark. So Vishnu was woken up and the instructions were given to us to carry out a strike immediately. So we said, in the dark, we can see nothing and we were not night qualified. I said, sir, we have a problem because anyway, we'll take up, but difficulty will be to spot any target in the night. It was a dark. He said, first light get airborne. So self and Das Gupta were dropped at the ACR. We went in. The target given to us, we marked our maps and waiting for some light to come out. Little later, we decided to go to the aircraft and wait till I can see the taxi track. 
when i could see the little of tax break we started off there is another story which came after 10 years or something 8 10 years later when i was stepping up one of the men one ac had stepped me up i had a very small torch plastic torch green and white color so when he stepped me up so i gave him that torch i said keep everything i had nothing no weapon no money and we taxied out there was no artillery call the only indication was that the moment number 2 hears my engine he will also start and follow we took off turn left to was pakistan and as per the map in the time we realized we have entered the pakistan and looking for that railway line sir and then i noticed something very funny okay i could see some lines coming from the left shining lines so i see it appears to be just railway lines coming from the left side and as i overflew the those railway line i found that railway line was missing so okay. i see why and how come these lines were shining and missing then i opened up on rt and called up i see it appears there is a, some train i overflow called out that i'm turning around pulled up in the general direction towards the train and there it was it was a huge train with two dark blue color engine in the north camouflage we could see the camouflage nets and the bamboos is sticking out mm-hmm. now i really cannot say at this time whether they were guns or they were tanks there was a huge train so i called up i said i'm going into the attack fired my first rocket our first pod with 19 rockets and that's the time the rt call came sir i've lost you i, I said be careful in this you know i'm pulling up to 3000 feet i'm mingling around be careful in any way is too big a target to i can stop i went into the second attack i didn't know that number 2 was still hanging around he had not left that place okay when i went into the with the guns now my rockets were over i heard a bang and i saw on left wing was on fire so i turned around to us india climb turn hoping that i will make it and within a second or so there was a bang noise the aircraft shook up and there was my cockpit was full of smoke and that's the time i took a decision to eject i don't know whether right side up or i was up, upside down i have no idea so i pulled my handle ejected hit the ground opened my parachute and ran in a general direction i don't know which direction it was whether it was towards india or whatever and when i was running i felt that something is little warm thing is tickling down my right leg so when i looked down i found the blood was flowing down through the g suit i fell got up to run again i don't know whether it was hockey stick rifle but or a lucky i have no idea came heavy on my back and it was free for all nice reception i think everybody wanted to kick me around and say go go home and say hit a coffee little later i was tied to a tractor i was put on a tractor and tied and somebody gave his you call gamcha like a pagdi and i was blindfolded <coughs> i was in terrible pain found myself it was most probably a rail police station where they put me down and i was unable to walk so charpai was brought i think and i was put in a charpai then i noticed that my stomach has bloated up the left side chest has caved in right side ribs were protruding outward i think some doctor was called somebody and a bandage was put on my stomach and on my chest then i was put on a three tender they lifted the charpai and took me to some place and i found that truck is tossing some railway line you can hear that 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 and there was a heavy firing i assess that most of all it was a su7 firing which i came to know in 1985 that was fatfat bapat who was also given the target to attack now okay i really don't know which was the place but i could hear those heavy gun somehow he missed me a lucky that i alive then i was taken to some place my hands were tied to a cot and i could smell it was a hospital and there was some well i will still say gentleman most probably he had either cane in his hand or maybe pencil i really don't know because my hands were tied to the railing and he was knocking on my knuckles then i was taking found myself in a building which had a, something like a gumbaj or like a mandir jo hota hai kol upar and there was a cross by it, bar and i was hanging with it it was very cold very cold i had nothing on my body not even a ring there was a person there were two three men one i was in a combination checkered color coat and a pant and two more chaps one of them had table tennis bat 
पीछे रबर ऑन बोथ साइड एंड यू आर हिटिंग मी ऑन माई बाइक क्वेट पेनफुल आफ्टर सम टाइम आई वॉज ऑनली हियरिंग द नॉइस I don't know why the pain died. I have no idea. Or maybe the brain has just stopped working. Then I was lower. Uh, sorry, when I was hanging, there was a gentleman uh, with this uh, combination. I still remember he used to smoke wheel cigarette, and I think he used to enjoy butting those cigarettes on my stomach, lower part. You understand what I'm saying? So there were quite a lot of marks on my body, and I think I was reading somewhere where Bhargo has mentioned about this that uh, he had met me and found those cigarette marks. on my body later on i was lowered on the floor in a small maroon color canking like thing was brought in it was a di- something like a dynamo if you recollect the olden days we used to have a cycle when the first you drive yes, the little more light yes sir something on that light they is to call it a mega sir it was known as mega it mega 500 mm-hmm. they were talking among itself it was very painful those electric shocks and then the court hold up me put my hands Under the chair by, and they are jumping on the chair by. My hands, both hands are damaged. I can't open them now. But in the meantime, I noticed that my stomach has totally blown up, you know, bloated up, and I was tre- under tremendous pain. So they got a very thin pipe from somewhere, very very thin pipe, and I was told to insert that pipe. And as I putting that pipe inside, it was burning and it was painful. But all of a sudden. the little blood and the urine started coming out and i found my stomach has little bit gone in then again i was blindfolded and taken somewhere i don't know where but it was a night when i was handcuffed aur wo pair mein kya bolte hain usko bediyan bol dete hain jo chain pair pair mein bhi pade rehte hain and i was helped by people to walk and they made me climb something so i could find two steps and they made me sit down it appeared to be some bus it was a soft thing and my hands were tied on the back pillow cover was put on my head and after some time this vehicle started moving and whenever this vehicle was moving and you know it used to come you know any pothole or something it used to really it was a real painful yes. but i could hear at that time that whenever this vehicle was jumping around i could hear some chain it appeared to me there some body else also in the same bus and i think next day i found myself lying in an air force cell which was about maybe 6 feet by 8 feet it was a plinth i had a khaki shirt and pant on and it was a dark room there was a small ventilator on top which had a black paper pasted there is steel bar door a gate followed by a wooden door which had a small hole in it maybe about 6 inches which had a cover so the guard could see from there by lifting that cover to the hole that time is still inside i don't remember how many days i have gone But I could make out little bit of thing. So, in the morning, when the birds are flying, there is another noise. In the evening, when the birds are flying, there is another noise. It was a dark room. You know, one bulb was on. Sorry, yeah, there was one bulb. I don't remember exactly, but after a few days, I crawled down, came up to the door, and I said, "I want to see the commandant or whoever is in charge here." The squad leader, his name I came to know later was Squad Leader Usman, who came and met me. So I asked him. I said, "I am a prisoner." and i am allowed to sit in the sun i should be given a time to sit outside in the sunlight he say we'll think of it and i say i smoke i don't get a cigarette so he laughed he say you have to buy your own cigarette i said from where i get the money and he was nice of him he offered me a gold flake oh great he used to smoke gold flake he say you have to buy your own cigarette so i asked you must say i cannot smoke any cigarette after this he said until you have your own money so that was the last cigarette i had then in the morning they used to Open the door. There was a, something like a veranda outside of these cells, and there was only one bathroom. Something missed one day, and when I was taken to the bathroom, I found a gentleman in the same khaki shirt and pant with a grey hair, tallish, a fairly tall gentleman, dark color. So looking at him, it appeared to me that he must be a senior chap. Now I didn't know whether he is Indian or he was planted. So I just said good morning. Later on, I came to know he was Wing Commander Koylo, and that is how the whole. the history changed i did not know the day i was shot down this new squad had moved into the base and koilo was the ceo so the on the same day everything had changed on that base this what i came to know from inko koilo then one day there was a knock on that door and the gruffy noise came he said apna khana khalo and plate was shred under the door somehow i managed to reach there 
in this what i'm going to tell you is unbelievable i know you should not believe it i was so hungry there was enamel plate there was some chapati in it in dal i wanted to eat everything in one go but when i broke the chapati and was taking to the mouth i could smell that chapati atta whatever you call it when you take it in rather eating the chapati i started throwing up i couldn't eat it the only thing i could hear was some noise coming out of my mouth and some air was coming back out there was nothing in my stomach then regions best known to them i was removed from that room and i was put in another room which was opposite which i came came to know later on when we saw how the camp was i was put on a charpai i hope you understand that the difference between charpai and a cot yes sir in a charpai you have a string which you pull to keep it tight unfortunately it had no string i couldn't fold my legs because it was very painful i couldn't stretch it because there no place to stretch after few days it, i was brought back to the same cell number 1 i was yeah i remember my cell number 1 was just behind that where the guard uh, corporal used to sit corporal richwi i think corporal richwi for the fat chap door was opened and i was allowed to come out so when i come out it was a bright light i was struggling to come out with the help of the wall i was walking when i saw outside four people sitting there one was in uniform i think he was a school leader i'm forgetting his name yeah. he was in uniform a school leader he was a doctor pakistan air force there was another gentleman sitting there who was in civvies and two more people sitting there in khaki shirt and pant one of them got up immediately and tried to rush towards me but he was limping i recognized him he was parulkar he came and helped me when i reached there i met other gentleman in khaki and when i met him he said I am his colleague Jaffa. Now that triggered me because it could be a Bengali name also. But when I met him, I found he had something very hard on his back. So I asked him, "Are you on a belt or something?" He said, "Yeah, I have got back injury, so they put a belt on me." When we were sitting outside, a mini bus came and stopped. Doors opened, the guards came out, and one chap came out of it who was limping, had a pillow cover on his head. So we asked him, "Who is he?" He said, "You will come to know." Later on, we came to know. that he was late limb tej ban singh with injury i think on his right leg if i if i remember i had injury on my right knee parulkar had injury on his left knee then i think on 25th of december we all were taken to one room and a priest was called i think there was a, there was a priest it was christmas this at the time we met the 12 of us we were 12 total jaf koilo was the senior most and i think uh, mulla firuz was the junior most and then we were permitted in the morning to get ready and we used to locked up in there was a little biggest room next to these cells we will be pushed into the room and locked and there will be guard outside there was a window on the left from where we could see there is a wall so the only way uh, we somehow managed to disclose that window a little bit and we realized that most probably we are going to now if push it hard it will come out so it was decided that night that the three people will be left in that room who will try and escape through the window yeah, i missed out something in between we used to get a breakfast one paratha and dal half a cup a uh, half a mug of that enamel mug tea lunch we used to have two chapatis and dal and same was in the evening but later on they gave us enough food in the sense they put chapatis in a plate so you could eat two or three whatever it was then they ship after the morning hours they used to shift us to a small little courtyard outside we used to sit in the sun 12 house and one day while talking we said when we used to be in officer's mess we used to get a suite so mr richwi who was a warrant officer he was number 2 there usman was number 1 is con leader he had some pity on us i think and we got some good so that used to be a suite for us and which came very handy later on i am no shame to tell that when we used to finish our lunch हम लोग रोटियां चुरा लेते थे उसमें से जो बची होती थी और उसको ले जाके कमरे में बिस्तर के नीचे जो होता तो उसमें रख देते जिससे सूख जाएंगे यदि स्किप किया तो सूखी रोटियां खाने के काम आएंगी कहीं आफ्टर फ्यू डेज दे गेव मे माई जी सूट सो वी ओपन द जी सूट कट इट समहाउ एंड इट हैज एयर बैग इन साइड इफ यू सीन द जी सूट टी वी आर यू मे बी नोइंग इट अंडर प्रेशर द एयर गोज इन वेन यू पुलिंग द जी so that bag was removed and was used to carry water in case of escape all these days i used to spit blood one day when we were locked up in this big room there was a little commotion the door was opened usman was there is only in uniform there was a very tall 
well built handsome person who introduced himself as mr tetsus vice president of international committee of red cross there was a retired colonel who was a pakistan red cross and one more civilian with him i don't know who he was so when tetsus walked in and he had a little polite conversation and he said anyone wants to speak to me i hope you all are being treated well there's a time i said no i want to speak he said we can speak outside i said no i'll speak here so we have a 12 of us plus that pakistan uh, colonel usman was there the, another civilian and i think tetsus had one more uh, person with him who appeared to be swiss person so when i narrated the story to him this this how was treated with electric shops burnt with cigarette but and nothing to eat there's something again i missed out something sorry to go back into the history when i was shifted from that my cell number 1 to other room as i had mentioned earlier which didn't have that rest room with it was very cold i don't know somebody had a little pity on me in the night the door was opened because i didn't have anything to cover myself and i found to my horror there was a maroon color door mat lying there if you remember the old cars we used to have the door you know mats on the car in the front and the rear so i said thank god i have something else something to cover myself anyway after having spoken to tetsu all in detail so there was a little noise here and there somebody was trying to butt in from that pakistan colonel i said no i'm telling everything here in front of all of you so that you know then mr tetsu and uh, usman had some word outside i don't know and i think next day i was taken to a hospital because i used to spit blood they took my x ray and i was declared that i have a tb people were asked not to mix with me and i was segregated and my room was in front of those cells where i could see other pws walking around but there was one person parulkar heller heaven he will pick up his plate an animal plate and that mug of tea and he'll come to the room where they were one chair outside in the veranda so i used to sit down there another chair was pulled and he will come every day in the morning and have breakfast so called breakfast one paratha and chane ka dal and tv i don't love what i'm going to tell you we used to eat very slowly at least i used to eat very slowly because it used to give me feeling i had enough to eat i used to be miserably hungry one day while i don't know parulkar remembers this incident or not while eating a small piece of paratha fell from parulkar's hand me looking at that paratha feeling guilty to pick it up and eat it or leave it there was a fight between an officer and a hunger so we discussed and said let's try and ask the people that they might give us two parathas because we feel miserably hungry so said they said no it they will not act i said we don't know they may not give us two they may give us one and half at least or make it increase the size of the paratha and to our horror next day we found one and half paratha at least we had something extra to eat then that room where we used to stay and that window which was dislodged the decision was taken the those three people i think one was grewal parul kar sir other was parul kar sir parul kar hari singh ji how was i think hari singh hari singh yes jhala so that it was decided that night that they will dislodge that window get out and jump the wall and they'll be outside which was airman rec- recruiting center just outside and in night we are locked back into the rooms and we are waiting for that gun to go Because if they're escaping and somebody sees, they'll be shot. It really rained that night. Really rained, heavy rain. But we didn't hear any bullet going. Morning when we are opened up and taken to the bathroom, so when when me we met in the same room, he said, "Oh, himmati nahi ho rahi thi. Rotiya thi, oh, jeb mein rakhi hui thi. Gur jo bachaya hua to wo bhi tha. Pani bhi tha. But is rain mein hum log nikal ke jaate kahan? And this matter was discussed there whether they should. Head east or west. I am talking the first escape when I was uh, yeah, there. Yes, yes, sir. But they were not to tell us whether we heading. Uh, they were to head east or west because we will be hammered afterwards. So that was the first escape which failed. And in month of February, Mulla Firuz was repatriated. In month of May, I was repatriated. After a few days, they realized that I was still I was spitting the blood. I was again taken to military hospital. Meantime. we received some red cross parcels from india i do not wish to mention what was there but i can only tell you this much i am ashamed to say that who were is organized it there was a night suit in it what we wanted was good shy